There we go. Functional day curve. What's going on, Gap Latin people? Unknown Reloader here, and I would like to develop a new load today for my lightweight 6.8 that I threw together. It's got a Wilson Combat Recon Barrel, really liking it. It seems to uh, let you just shoot and shoot and shoot, and it doesn't seem to open up. Very nice little build here with BCM Blim upper. It's got a Holosun red dot and magnifier because this is kind of my lightweight in the thick stuff gun. Got a polymer lower, KP15 polymer lower on here. I really need to throw a nice two stage in. It's just got this BCM pin too here. Now I have been using the Hornady 110 gram boat tail hollow points. And they shoot really, really well, although the accuracy note I found was a little slow, but that was just for max accuracy. Had a 0 0.34 at 100 yards with these, so these are really nice. They just have to be loaded out kind of long. And then that's a whole nother story about finding magazines that let you load them out long. So I found these ASC mags, and everything was going well, but... Uh, these really tear up your brass. Like, I mean, absolutely gouge. Some of these cases, I threw most of the bad ones away, but they got little gouge marks in them. I don't know if you can see. Anyhow, you gotta watch these. These will tear up your brass. You need to make sure you cut and polish in there to give it a nice smooth entry. Now I wanted to go with the 120 grain SST because again, I've heard a lot of good stuff about them. They seem to work really well. I've seen some good videos of just absolute smacking with these things. So that's why I wanted to go with those. Maybe push them a little faster, not really go for maximum, you know, dead nuts accuracy, but just a good, powerful hunting load. Because this one, although it did perform quite well, and it was just at 50 yards, was kind of a in through the neck here, and then broke some ribs on the way out went through the opposite side shoulder and got stuck under the hide on the other side. I'd really like to have seen a pass through and I think it would if I just pushed them a little faster or if it was like a straight broadside shot it would have gone through just fine but you know a lot of people say you can't hunt with boat tail hollow points that they're not effective. If this is a match bullet and it's not supposed to it doesn't say hunting on the box so you can't hunt with it. And all them guys on the rock slide forms and the snipers hide, they just, all those pictures of all those dead deer shot with match bullets, they all just got lucky that them bullets don't work at all. But mine sure did. So anyways, hmm, delicious jerky. Not match bullet. I know they work very well when you shoot them in the head. But anyways, I'd like to have more of a mm, decade hunting bullet. Mm, let me sample this fine jerky again, and I'll get back to you. All right, so getting on the Hodgdon website here. Looks like we got a starting load here at 24.5. We're going to go ahead and ignore that because we're not Johnny's reloading bench. Go up straight to the maximum here. Now, 25.43 over 27.2, accurate 2200. That sounds about right. You know, it should be going just a little bit slower than the uh, 110 grains. So we'll go ahead and do our lighter test right there. Back down to a grain and a half below max and work up. Oh, let's take a look at our brass we got here. All right, so our brass is some nice, fresh, once-fired S&B. Some of that good, fancy cellular and bellow from that Czech Republic, what now makes them hipster pistols. So this should be some good stuff here. I went ahead and did a full prep and a kneel because some of these, yeah, you can kind of see the little gouges right there the magazine made. I hate I didn't catch that before I fired mm, all 200 rounds of these. But anyways, we won't talk about that anymore. Some of these should be fine. Well, most of them should be fine, I should say. Most of them look pretty good. So we should get some good results of this stuff, hopefully. Uh, here's a little data and kind of showing you how much I've neglected this rifle. I built it well, a while ago as a deer gun, and then I, you know, you buy new stuff, and then you guys shoot deer with that, and 
all that mess. But anyhow, so we'll go back to uh, the 110 grain boat tail hollow point here. It looks like this was with a CCI 450. And the velocities I was getting, here we had a no read, so we had a little flat spot right here. And then I had uh, eye trouble nonsense. That's since been fixed and remedied. So anyhow, we'll just look at the data up here. This was my main flat spot of the uh, 27.5, 27.3, I think I was going at here. Yeah, 27.5 here. So the 27.5 was what I picked. Going 25.65, so a little slow for 110 grain, about 100 feet per second too slow, but it did give some really nice groups. But as I found out, uh, my barrel does not like bullets with a secant O-drive when they are seated back. So they kind of open up a little bit if you see them to the cantilever. But still, you know, under an inch at 100 yards, that's perfectly fine for a hunting rifle. Now the 110 grain S&B, yeah, 2642 shot just, eh, just as good. And that stuff looked like it had a tangent O-drive, so uh, seemed to be more tolerant of the jump. Now both these are going to be secant, and it kind of looks like with the 120, if you get that tip in that magazine, I'm gonna have to load around the cantilever. So hopefully these will be uh, a little bit jump tolerant. You can kind of see the similarities and differences here. Maybe about the same, but a little longer. And it's hard to show up on camera. So let's get to loading some of these up and uh, see how they do. Mm. Let's crack open a fresh pound here. Yeah. Mild buttery notes. And just a hint of carcinogens. Excellent. All right, we will be starting from twenty five seven, working our way all the way up to twenty seven five. We'll see where that gets us with a CCI four hundred. Seven, twenty-five, seven, and this wants that for me. Twenty-five, seven, right on there. Two in the mags. Looks like we can get about a 2.3 maximum. 2.307, 2.308, something like that. All right. Let's shoot for a 2.30 even. I don't have enough to keep those tips out of the end of the magazine. So that puts her just behind the cantilever. Okay. See how she shoots. Well, two strange things. When I went to shoot my burn around to make sure the barrel cron was working good. Uh, this one got a little cold and this one just fell apart. When I shot, first one shot just fine. I went to OK Unload. Let's check our new bullets and just huh, came apart. I don't know, maybe it's a good idea to load that cantilever and just suffer the minuscule accuracy loss. Give her a little crimp at least anyhow. 
Yeah, that was just twice fired brass that's got that cracked neck going on. Hmm, weird. Oh well, good thing we got the new stuff. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Oh look, I just had this one stored in here. I certainly wasn't manufacturing anything or trying to show you how to do that. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so working up to the maximum. I like to start down here grain and half low just to see if there's any interesting little flat spots. I know with the uh, 77 grain match kings, if you back them down off uh, out of 18 inch barrel down to around 2700, they really shoot good out of my gun. But uh, interesting just to find little flat spots down here in the lower section. And looks like we're developing one right here. Kinda. Okay, so with this bullet, we will exceed the maximum published data. Oh. Okay, here we go. Exceeding maximum published data with our nuclear load. Four nine three, right under twenty five hundred feet per second, and didn't even flatten the primer. Okay, so twenty seven five, three tenths grain over max. That's gonna blow your face off, boy. Four, nine, five. Didn't even flatten the primer. No ejector marks, no nothing. Okay, so we see with the data here, starting to get a little flat spot right here on the top end. And uh, still got this dude hickey right here. Now I was looking and oh, my bad. I didn't know you was using a freaking Palma barrel to uh, shoot 6.8 SPC out of. So uh, after some quick Googling here, it appears that uh, you, a pointer, there you go. You 2450 is about your standard 16 inch velocity, but that's factory ammo. So we'll go ahead and discount that. So, I have been inclined to load up 27.7, and here it is. Now, let's test this thing out and see if we got a good flat spot here on this top end to work with. Careful. Oh, oh, careful. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, good. Founder. Looking good. Oh. No, that's not an ejector mark. That's just where it hit the concrete. Good deal. Okay, so looks like something going on here in the 26 grain range. 26.2, 26.3. And then we had what we got right here. So that's a jump from 70 to 90. And of course we've got another 20 feet per second jump there too. 
Hmm. So looking like there's something going on right here too. And of course we got here. 25 feet per second jump. Hmm. And so you're saying they should be going 2450. Huh. Pick out our flat spots here. I'm guessing we should load 26.8 and see how that does. Maybe 27, but still that's another about 20 feet per second jump. I hate it when it does that. You get your flat spot started, then it jumps too much. Oh well. Load up a few and see how they turn out. You know, it is just 50 yards, but I did go out there and put up another target, and I noticed that every single one of those through the ladder test went in the same hole. So this might be a good shooter. We'll see. Well, they all made one hole, you know, not, not exactly the same hole. You, you know what I'm saying, anyways. Let us see. Average of 24.37, okay. And standard deviation of 13, so not bad, not bad. It could be better though. Uh, the 110 grains had a standard deviation of six. Brass looks fine. So now, 27.2. Let's see what we get. We get a ruined case from short stroking from running an adjustable gas block. Well, okay, well, let's pause on that. Not even look at that one. Okay, the one that short stroke is a 2464. I went ahead and made three new ones and went a full turn in on the gas block. So we'll have less bleed. Oh, this is a superlative arms adjustable gas block. And I'll just single load these in case we have any more problems.
2484 and bolt lock back. Four six six. Okay. It's about where you should be. Two four seven five average. And a SD of nine. Okay, single digit standard deviation. Barely there, but a single digit standard deviation. Extreme spread of 18. So I think we'll go with the 27.2. That sounds right where it should be. Just a little high, 24.75. Okay. Okay, red dot and magnifier, yes. That was our high charge 27.2. That could have been better. And up here, that's, uh. Wow, that's looking pretty nice. There was the uh, 10 shots from our ladder test. Huh. All right. Okay, so I wasn't happy with that 27-2 group. So I loaded up three more, and this shows you why we really should be doing five shot groups. Is this one had an SD of 15 with an extreme spread of 30. Now, let's go see what it looked like down here. Let's see if this one looks any better. Oh yeah. Yeah, buddy. That'll do right there. That certainly looks a lot better than that. That's what I thought. All right, and looks like uh, cranked her up a little too high. Come back down one minute. Well, what did we all learn today? Looks like 27.2 would be an excellent starting point for this jerky load at 24.78 or 24.75 whoever's counting and one hole at 50 yards I think that's excellent that will be just fine for making jerky now I'm going to load up a sack full of these at 27.2 grains be sure to load your own bullets and go get your own jerky and you know be cool to everybody else and share it with them and have a good time appreciate you watching